Should you trust a BMI scale? Stick around and find out. Hello and welcome. I am Ray Upchurch and you are watching the Treyhart channel. Today, we are going to be learning about the BMI scale. Before I go on, write in the comment section if you are using the BMI scale. If you don't know what it is, it's the Body Mass Index Scale. Go ahead, write it in. So, should you trust the BMI scale? Well, spoiler alert, I only partially trust it. Now, you may perhaps be saying, well, either you trust it or not, what is it? Well, to understand why I only partially trust it, then you have to get into the history of the BMI scale. In 1832, the studies of a statistician named Adolf Quetelet, or how it's pronounced, was published. Initially, Quetelet had been hoping to branch a new means of science called social physics when he discovered the body mass index. In the early 1900s, it was noted that illnesses were in some way linked to excess body fat. During that time, due to increased insurance claims, the vice president of the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company, Lewis Dublin, developed a similar system, but his divided people into small, medium, and large frames. When the other insurance companies also noted this correlation, these tables became the norm, and in the 1970s, they were used in the masses. During the 70s and 80s, Ansel Keys published a landmark study that included 7,400 men in five countries. He noted that the most reliable formula was the one that was invented earlier by Quetelet. By 1985, the National Institute of Health tried to define obesity initially basing it on male and females, with 27.8 being considered normal for men and 27.3 normal for women, or at least on the obesity scale it is. This was later consolidated for both sexes at 25 for overweight and 30 for obese. When Arnold Schwarzenegger won the Mr. Universe contest, his BMI was over 31, which is considered obese. The interesting thing is that Ansel Keys himself had warned against using the BMI scale for individual classifications. He knew that it did not account for gender, age, muscle mass, or bone density. This warning has been ignored, and today the BMI is the norm. So while it seems that the BMI needs to be scrapped, is there actually a better way to assess a person's health? The answer is yes, but they are not always consistently applied or widely available, and for each of them, there are pros and cons. Skin calipers, for instance, are around $10 a pair and can be found in most gyms. The skin caliper test involves measuring skin folds on several sides of the body. After putting the numbers in, it will give you an estimate of the body fat. The pros are, these are cheap. The cons are that only a portion of the body parts are red. So if a portion that is not red has more fat than that that is red, then it will be inaccurate. The other con is, if you use other techs, they may perform it differently. If you're interested in getting a pair for yourself, I will put a link in the description below this video. But be warned, it takes practice to use these correctly. However, that being said, 
once you learn, at least you will be consistent on yourself. Bioelectrical impedance is another method. It sends small electric impulses through the body as a way to measure fat percentage. Lean muscles conduct these impulses quicker and fat conducts it slower as a faster response means that you have a leaner physique. No, you can't feel it. And the pros are that it is affordable and can be kept at home. And some weight scales even now include them. The cons are they are generally less accurate and are affected by simple things such as just having eaten a meal or being dehydrated or just exercising just before you do it. Another way is hydrostatic weighing, wherein a person is dunked underwater and weighed after first being weighed on land, then the two numbers along with the density of the water is calculated. The pro is that this is very accurate, but the cons are very obvious. This cannot be done at home and it is not found in your doctor's office. And if you have a phobia of water, this is definitely out. So you would have to find a place that can do it. And if you're not scared of going underwater, then the fact that you would have to excel completely before going under so as not to cause any errors in the reading might worry you. Yet another way is dual energy x-ray absorbency, otherwise known as DEXA scan, which allows experts to determine bone density as well as body compositions. These are extremely accurate and only involve you lying on the table. The con is that they are only available in certain locations and usually involve getting an appointment with a medical personnel if you don't mind being exposed to varying wavelengths of x-ray particles, that is. Another is air displacement plasmography, if that's how you pronounce it, that is. This is similar to water weighing, but instead of the water, they use air. If you're okay with enclosed spaces, then you sit in a bod pod. The pros are that it's very accurate. The cons are that you might only find these in certain commercial places at around $40 to $60 a go. And lastly, 3D body scans. These are coming soon and some home devices have hit the market like the naked scanners. This does require you to remove all of your clothes or at least wear very tight underwear. The pros are these are very accurate within 2% of the DEXA scans for most body parts. The cons are that the personal version is just under a thousand dollars and these are not currently widely available at the doctor's office. If you want to know my personal favorite then I prefer the string method. Now the string method involves taking a string, standing against a wall, and using the string to measure your height. Cut it at that point, so cut it at your height. Bring the highest and lowest point together, so it's now in half, then when you got it in that half, cut that. Take that half and put it around your waist. If it fits, then you're where you need to be. Now, those of you that are fiercely typing in the comments section, I know this is not scientific, but it works. The, a study with the association between abdominal size and health outcomes showed an improved outcome when men's were less than 40 inches and women's were less than 35. However, no mention of height or bone structure was associated with the study. And as such, I'm not sure how it would fit in some people. For example, the other day I met a man who is six foot 10 inches and her hands were twice the size of mine. 
So if you use the string method, then he would still be bigger than the 40 inches suggested. My ultimate goal has a few conditions. I want to reach a BMI of around 30 or under, so that that would make me around 197 pounds or less. I want my waist size to be 40 inches or less. And if you go by the string method, that would make my ideal waist size about 34 inches. Now, I have never had a waist of 34 inches, even when I was in my teens. When I was in my teens, I weighed around 180 pounds, and my smallest waist was around 36 inches. So that is going to be my goal to have my smallest waist around 36 inches and my overall fat percent to be around 20 percent. Now remember these are for me. If you would like to set your personal goals for a fat percentage I would suggest you reading the ideal fat percentage chart at builtlean.com. So what do you think? Are you still going to use the BMI skill? Or like me, are you going to use a modified version? Let me know in the comments below. If you have not already done so, I would like you to join me for the Walk 52 Challenge. I have put some links in one of my cards, hopefully it will be up there. If it's not up there, then it's in the information below. And yes, for those of you who have walked the first two, of the walk 52 challenge a new video is coming this next week i promise i was just waiting on some music if you've liked this video please hit the like button and if you're not a current subscriber please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you could be notified of any new videos remember if you want to live for tomorrow you have to start today I will see you next time. Bye for now.